Hello viewers, welcome to another edition of CHP Talks. We've got a little bit of a list of things to talk about today. We're going to be talking about the gun grab. We're going to be talking about Jim Carajalio's parliament reconvening and about the Calgary door hanger project. I'm here today with Rod Taylor, CHP leader, and uh, let's get to it. Well, Peter, it's been a, a week here of uh, events. So uh, this time last week, we were at the March for Life uh, or participating in the virtual March for Life. And many Canadians were joining hearts in their hearts and prayers and words in effort to raise awareness of the issue of the sanctity of human life. And so that was great, great to see all those folks uh, involved and, and uh, dedicated to the cause of protecting innocent human life. Yeah, so a big thank you to uh, Campaign Life Coalition for not giving up, even though we couldn't be all together in person on Parliament Hill. We were able to uh, hear some good speakers and uh, get some good encouragement last week, Thursday. If you were on the National March for Life, you know what I mean. And if you weren't, you can probably still watch it. It's, uh, it was all recorded. So, Yeah, excellent job that they put together, in including uh, you know several evenings of pro-life movies including one that I have really come to love, a little 15, 20 minute movie called Crescendo. If you haven't seen it, you need to see that. So anyway, great job by Campaign Life. And I understand We Need Law also was uh, doing a number of other things around, across the country, doing some uh, drive uh, drive for life. Uh, with yeah, some pro-life convoys. That was a new thing yeah. this year. Yeah, very good. Oh. Everyone who participated in that. Great. So what's about uh, Jim Carhalios? What's the latest, Peter? Yeah, so the judge ruled for him. We have, Jim Carhalios has been trying to get the leadership, um, become a, a contestant for the leadership of the Conservative Party. Um, he, he's a drain the swamp kind of a guy. Um, he wants to get rid of corruption wherever he sees it. And he saw it in the way that they were actually excluding him from uh, certain things with regards to uh, trying to... Um, become a registered contestant. Um, he raised his money, he got his signatures, and uh, but then he was disqualified and the judge ruled that um, even though the party did have the authority in some way to disqualify him, the way they did it was wrong and uh, so he, he ruled that out. And so Jim Carl Halios might be back in that race um, if he is, if he is able to uh, complete the things he still has to do. Um, we'd be happy to try to get him on to one of these uh, CHP talks. We'll see if he has time for that. But uh, he's a pretty, he's a straight shooter. He's quite yeah. a, uh, he's quite a fighter. <laughs> and and uh, so he would be, he's also pro-life, uh, which was yeah. why there's, we have some interest in uh, him being allowed back into the race. He was the second one that was sort of disqualified or, or kicked out. It was kind of a, it was looking to be a bad trend. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, we had Derek Sloan on, and so there's Derek Sloan, uh, Dr. Leslie Lewis, and possibly uh, now if he can uh, clear one final hurdle, Jim Carahelios has three pro-life uh, contestants. So that's, it's good to see that people are getting motivated to uh, help people like this. And uh, one of the next things that we've really um, got to keep an, an eye on is our parliament. Our members of par parliament have not been meeting normally for the last number of weeks, actually really a couple of months now, and they're supposed to reconvene on Monday as normal, everybody back, but uh, we're, we're going to be watching that. No, we certainly, uh, you know, we do elect members of parliament to represent us and to uh, handle the serious business of the day, uh, including especially, I mean, one of the things parliament does is spend money. Now, we're not always happy with how they spend money, but, but uh, at least we're you know, it's the way it works is that we have representatives there to decide how much money and what to spend it on. And uh, the prime minister and his uh, inner circle have been sort of making decisions, uh, quite a few decisions without leaning or without benefiting from the feedback of uh, the other representatives in the house. Yeah, and they, the way that they've used the power um, in terms of spending, but also uh, more worryingly, really, um, you know, the spending 
could be seen as inevitable perhaps, but um, using an order in council while parliament is not sitting to um, make illegal certain firearms, um, that's been, I mean, I think it's unprecedented um, to, to use orders in council for something like that. And then um, to just arbitrarily really choose certain firearms that should become illegal in the future when as we've said before, and we'll have to say again, it's, uh, it's the people who don't care about whether their firearms are legal or not, where they get them, that are the big problem. Yeah, I understand uh, three out of four of the firearms used by the Nova Scotia shooter uh, came from the States, or at least that is the story, uh, you know, illegally crossing the border. Hey, do we have a border? Do we, do we have any protection at the border to keep illegal people and uh, things from being brought in? I don't know. But anyway, uh, you know, banning, making something illegal that, uh, like Peter said, criminals don't care whether it's legal or not. So... I'm not sure how how much that helps uh, public safety. But anyway, regardless, the prime minister and his cabinet should not be uh, making these decisions for all Canadians without the benefit of feedback, discussion, and debate by other elected members of parliament. And the, the elected members, <clears throat> like some of them have spoken out, uh, most notably Scott Reid, he spoke out about um, not being able to sit in Parliament and to do their, his job. I mean, they're elected for a job to just say, well, you can't come to Ottawa, you can't sit in the House of Commons, is uh, is actually quite worrying. Um, it's it's not something like we... Some could see it as an inevitable, they could, you know, they could see it as being necessary, but they're, you know, we haven't told doctors they can't go and do their work and our members of parliament are there for our protection as well. I mean, that's their role. They should be there with masks on if necessary, but. It could get to be a habit playing uh, COVID hooky. So, uh, mm, yeah. So uh, what are, some of these other uh, bills that are before Parliament that have not had the benefit of uh, full debate by members of Parliament. Uh, right. So once once they're back, hopefully um, they're going to be debating uh, Bill C seven. I think is the first one we want to talk about. Right. Um, yeah. The expansion of medical assistance in dying. Basically, uh, the government wants to uh, expand the list of people who could qualify for uh, being put to death by a physician. Of course, when they uh, passed the, the law in 2016, they said they were going to review it after, uh, after four or five years. And now they're changing without the review, they're going ahead and changing it. And just as we said back then, before the bill was passed, uh, we said that it would be a slippery slope and wherever they started, they would be expanding and making it more, uh, including more people in the list uh, who could be terminated. Now they want to include uh, mentally ill. Uh, they want to include young people. And uh, yeah, it's, it, it's that same old struggle between, you know, we're trying to prevent suicides on one hand and uh, then encouraging people to commit suicide at taxpayer expense on the other end. It just doesn't make sense. But that's a, an important yeah, and when and consent is always one of the big um, the big issues, right? I mean, we have people who are saying, "Well, you know, it's my right to say when I want to die," um, and uh, how does that argument fit in, of course, with somebody who's mentally ill? Do they have consent? You know, or, or are they being manipulated, being pushed towards um, asking? or uh, submitting to suicide. I mean, it's at, it's at that point, I don't think, it, uh, you know, suicide isn't really the word to use. It's murder. Um, yeah. Yeah. And people have changed their minds. Uh, sometimes people yeah. are lonely or whatever. I heard a story the other day, a lady who was very lonely. Uh, someone thought that meant that she wanted to uh, die by medical assisted suicide. And when the doctor showed up, she uh, cheered right up because now she had company and uh, she didn't want to die at all. She just was lonely. And, and, uh, you know, the worst case scenario, you get these stories from Europe where 
uh, a lady was held down. The doctor, because she changed her mind, she didn't want to die, and the doctor told her family to hold her down, and she's, uh, you know, fighting to stay alive while the family holds her down, and the doctor gives her an injection. I mean, that's that's the uh, terrible uh, direction that this stuff is going as the government keeps expanding it. Yeah, and that's a free country, probably. Yeah, Holland, Belgium, those ones are on the leading edge of this, and it's a bad, bad place to go. Quite a few people over there, by the way, are killed without their specific consent. It's by a doctor's uh, decree or a doctor's decision. And, you know, it, it comes to the point where the doctors just want to free up the bed, so put someone else in it. And that's a pathetic way to run a medical system. Uh, the, the next bill that we might want to mention is uh, Bill C-8 is sitting there. Uh, and of course, uh, these are government bills that C-8, Justice, or, uh, Justin Trudeau asked his Justice Minister David Lametti to uh, introduce a, a conversion therapy ban federally. They have a bill going S-202 in the Senate. But, uh, you know, cities across the country, we'll be talking about Calgary in a minute, but uh, have been instituting these uh, conversion therapy bans. But the federal government is right behind it. I think they're using these municipalities as, uh, you know, sort of uh, blockers to, to go ahead of them and clear the, clear the way if it gets passed in enough municipalities and the feds uh, know that they can push it through on a federal level. Um, but it, it certainly, uh, again, uh, is an intrusion into parental life and uh, parental rights and family life and uh, certainly another attack by the LGBTQ agenda people who want to make it possible to go in only one direction. They, you know, they, they allow, you know, school counselors and different ones, teachers in schools even, to influence young people to make life-changing, irreversible decisions that take pu puberty blockers, hormone therapy, and even uh, gender reassignment surgery. But if you want to help someone go back the other direction, they, they don't want you to even be able to talk to them. And that includes parents. So we're really concerned about that. Um, we have something and, going on in Calgary, right, uh, Peter? <clears throat> well, that's what I was just going to say. The the our electoral district in uh, for the Calgary area has been putting out door hangers on this. If you saw uh, CHP talks a couple weeks ago, we had Tom Lip on. He showed us the uh, door hanger, and we are uh, getting feedback from that. Um, Calgar Calgarians have uh, let us know some of them in rude language, some of them with uh, unpleasant. Uh, dialogue that they uh, don't appreciate it and we've also had some good conversations with some people who are happy that um, this issue is being discussed because um, not everyone in um, the LGBTQ community is particularly um, happy with this state of affairs. They've some of them know that they've changed their mind on some of these things, some of them several times, and uh, they definitely don't want it to be a one-way street. I am, and, and, that's, and that's members of their own community. And so um, they, they are maybe the ones who need to have their voice heard most loudly, um, but for the rest of us who are concerned about them and others, and um, anyone in the, um, in, as psychologists, uh, therapists, uh, especially, are going to have to be so much more careful with these things in place as to what they, you know, what they say from a professional standpoint. Even, yeah. Well, it's it's going to end up uh, basically making it illegal for parents if if this passes in Calgary and certainly Bill C eight. If it passes federally, it'll make it illegal for parents to counsel their own children on the issues of gender confusion and for pastors and professional counselors to uh, help someone who wants to uh, change back from from the lifestyle that they've chosen uh, could be uh, serious fines ten thousand dollar fines and so on it's uh, simply an intrusion onto 
the right of free speech and the right of uh, free people to to choose the lifestyle and the kind of uh, psychological help that they they want. So we certainly hope that uh, Calgary City Council, unlike several that have already uh, taken this dreadful step, uh, I think these city councils get influenced by lobby groups. They don't really understand the issue. They think they're doing something for uh, for human rights by, you know, re- respecting people of all lifestyles and so on but but uh, what they're actually doing is imposing on the free rights of all Canadians to have a f- free and fair and frank discussion about important issues especially between parents and their children yeah. so in terms of Calgary we just also want to to uh, let you know if you're a CHP member, we want to uh, let you know we are still planning to have our um, convention in Calgary in October. And so uh, if you're a member and you're actually, if you're not a member and you think, wow, I'd really like to get a little bit more involved in CHP, see how things work, um, be involved in some policy discussion, things like that, um, become a member. If you're a if you're following us on Facebook, if you've liked our page, we really appreciate that. Um, but you've got to actually go to um, chp.ca and uh, and click on the button and follow the directions to become a member. And that's a, a ten dollar fee for a one year membership, and a twenty five dollar fee for a three year membership, or a forty dollar fee for a family membership. And that's a three year membership. I'll. So, and um, that will put you on the, that will take you the first step towards becoming a a delegate for a CHP convention or an observer. And uh, we'd love to see many of you there. And uh, Calgary is a nice city to visit and uh, close to the Rockies, beautiful, uh, beautiful tourist spot as well. It'll be a great place to be October 21 to 24. uh, and uh, get to meet the national board. We will be electing some new officers on our national board. So those uh, members who are listening in, uh, you know, you should consider whether uh, you want to, you know, step up and and take on greater role of service uh, to the CHP and to this nation. And, uh, you know, it'd be a good time of strengthening uh, one another in the faith and in our commitment to restoring righteousness uh, in Canada's political uh, arena. Yes. So Um, one other bill, uh, or were you something more in the convention, Peter? No. Yeah. Uh, One more uh, bill we wanted to mention uh, is uh, Bill C-233, Kathy Wagenthal's uh, sex selective abortion bill. And that's one that uh, deserves uh, a full discussion and debate in Parliament. It's really one that every single member of Parliament should be voting for, regardless of their NDP, Liberal, Green, uh, whatever they are, or Conservative, of course. But uh, in Canada, do you know that there's no protection for the innocent pre-born up right up until the moment of birth? Sometimes very little protection at the moment of birth. But the... Um, the fact that some babies are killed just because they're girls uh, is is astounding that that's allowed in this country. And uh, MP Wagenthal has uh, brought forward a bill uh, to raise that question, uh, to make it illegal to kill a baby just because it's a girl. And so we, we certainly support her in the effort to thank her for using her uh, opportunity as a member of parliament to speak up to protect the innocent and uh, we hope that her bill gets a good discussion and an honest response it's not just a a party knee-jerk reaction you know some of the parties are just so committed to abortion and the killing of the pre-born that they they don't always stop and consider and what it is they're saying, but uh, we, we think that this is a great bill and a great way to start the discussion. As you say, a good way to start the discussion, and uh, I think with that, we should probably wrap up our discussion and yeah. uh, wish everyone uh, safety and hope that we can see you again uh, next week on another edition of CHP Talks. Yeah, thank you for joining us today for CHP Talks. Uh, thank you, Peter.